Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's update. It's the week of June 13th and we'll look back on the events that's transpired and get a perspective on what's happening in the Middle East. Um, a reminder that you want to grab the PDF PowerPoint that accompanies this YouTube presentation. It should just be a link on the YouTube page or you can go to our website at holygroundexplorations.com. As you know by now, I start with the, uh, uh, the phrase, as I see it, the question or questions of the day. And with everything that's happening up north, from what we're reading of bombs landing uh, in Safat, in Katsreen, um, along the shores of the Galilee, the question that I have is, is this a, a soft war right now or a hard war? Um, and when, when will Israel declare complete all out war against Hezbollah? Uh, I, I kept postponing uh, recording this wondering, uh, well, maybe it'll be the next half hour or the next hour Things are completely chaotic in the north. And then we come to our news bites. And um, as we look back over this last week, we know that Benny Gantz abandoned ship amidst the storms of the war. Uh, Hamas would like to issue a thanks to Gantz for providing sort of a backwind for their sales. Uh, unbelievable. We'll talk more about Benny Gantz here in a moment. Our Vice President, Kamala Harris, um, is focusing on the amazing rescue of the four hostages, but instead of highlighting what really an, a miracle and what an accomplishment it was, Kamala wants to focus in on the deaths of the Palestinians. Um, when she mentions the so-called Israeli operation that rescued the four hostages. Her focus were on the victims, in her words, the innocent Palestinians. Had little to say about the four that were taken captive for close to 250 days. Thanks, Kamala. The New York Times reports that uh, Hamas members now have been uh, given standing orders to kill hostages if they think the IDF is coming to rescue. Uh, AOC, another uh, bright blip on the screen of our politicians. Um, and this is a head scratcher. Her quote is, you can be an anti-Zionist, just don't be an anti-Semite. Uh, if that makes sense to you, please send me an email and explain it. Uh, Trump, on the Israeli-Hamas war, quote, Israel has to finish the job. They must win, and they must do so quickly. I have people telling me that they don't think October 7th, those attacks actually happened. It's just like Holocaust denial. It's the same people that are now denying October 7th. And then finally for our news bites, since Thursday morning, since this morning, red alerts have been sounding throughout the entire northern Galilee region. Uh, the attacks of Hezbollah are ongoing as I am even recording this at this time. And then our articles, we start with Hezbollah. We'll just segue into this. An official in the Quds force of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard told the Foreign Policy magazine, quote, Hezbollah possesses, his words, Hezbollah possesses more than one million missiles of various types. Again, there's five types that we know of, um, katushas, um, 
precision armor, uh, anti-armor missiles, and so on and so forth. They have five times more than what the Western world or the Western co co countries actually thought they possessed. Um, just out that Hezbollah is threatened today to increase their range to not just the northern part of the Galilee, but to Haifa, Hadera, Caesarea, and Netanya. And uh, once again, uh, reports are that Hezbollah has ordered the closure of Lebanese skies to civilian flights at this moment. Hamas's response, by the way, to the so-called Israeli proposal for ceasefire, which is actually Biden's, their response, and Blinken's gone on to say the war is going to continue, this is ridiculous, and that coming from Blinken. But one demand, you got to love this, one demand uh, is that Jerusalem will commit to a permanent end of war, even if Hamas breaks the terms of the ceasefire. Can you believe that they actually would write that? And Hamas is requiring written guarantees from the United States, Russia, China, and Turkey that Israel will not resume fighting in the Strip regardless of whether or not Hamas abides by the terms of the agreement. I, I'm surprised that we just didn't pony up and sign right on the spot. Sounds good to me. And then we have again back to Blinken. Um, there's no doubt about it. This is, there's a puppet master behind this. And Blinken is just being used by the Biden administration. I mean Gantz, sorry. Might as well combine the two. Blinken made Gantz resign from the government to create mass chaos once again on the streets of Israel. Um, again, he's arriving to meet with Netanyahu and, of course, to give marching orders to Benny, his boy, in a sense. And so, sad but true, uh, the pundits in Israel say this is actually going to be a good thing because even though... Um, Gans proclaims to be a centrist. The reality is taking him out. Netanyahu will still have enough seats to remain in power. And it will give, uh, I guess, more control to the right wing of things. And so what needs to be done must be done and must be done quickly. And having Gans out um, provides the possibilities of this happening. And then the Democrats' desperate plan. Why are they so desperate? And again, we've said this over the past few weeks. Biden is more concerned about getting rid of the Netanyahu government than he is to get the American hostages back, or any of the hostages for that matter. That's his focus, how to topple the Netanyahu government. And why? And he's dealing, of course, now with this uh, Saudi, uh, you know, normalization or whatever. What's the connection to all of this? Well, Biden's big challenge is the fact that um, the Saudis are threatening to change payment. The petrodollar system, which has been in place since 1972, the Saudis are saying, I don't know if we want to just use the petrodollar we might want other sources of finances instead of the U.S. dollar. And that is a major concern to Biden. And that behind the scenes is why we've got to get rid of Netanyahu. We need to prop up this ceasefire. We need to have a two-state solution. We need to have, uh, in a sense, the normalizations behind the Saudis because we need to keep the petrodollar in place. And then, as I mentioned, this slide here, slide number eight, make sure you grab that PowerPoint. Some good news. And here's a, a portrait of pictures of the hostages that were rescued uh, in a daring operation that took place. And uh, we're just starting to read once again the ordeals and all the details. But 
when there's good news, we need to stop and focus, give thanks to God, and uh, continue to pray for the release of over 120 that still remain in captivity. However, this good news is not shared worldwide, especially by the world media. And that's where the war is taking place, in the media these days. So instead of simply reporting the news that the hostages were released, the world's media, for the most part, and we just talked about Kamala, the world's media, uh, in a sense, instead of highlighting the rare and complex operation in the heart of Gaza, they are focusing in, and whether it's the headlines or whatever, that the media outlets are chosen, have chose to label it as one of the bloodiest raids of the war. And they go on and they use these three tactics to achieve that goal of shifting the victory and putting blame once again on Israel, turning justice into injustice. One, they will minimize the achievement by using the term the hostages were freed. They weren't freed, they were rescued, but you'll see the word freed used. Two, they will emphasize the Palestinian death toll based upon Hamas's figures, and we know how trustworthy those are. And then finally, they will um, not even mention, they will whitewash the fact that the terrorists use civilians as human shields. That's what's taken place. The shifting, the blame, and again, the threats globally to Israel. A couple more before we're done. Think about it um, again with what took place. If Hamas really cared about civilians um, and they cared about the uh, fatalities or whatsoever, uh, they should not have started an unprovoked war. They should not have invaded and done the atrocities that they've done. And Palestinian families that are caught in the crossfire shouldn't offer their homes and take money to hide uh, the hostages whatsoever. Uh, that's the bottom line. It's not Israel's fault. Fault falls upon Hamas as well as the Palestinians. And in our last article that I don't have time to go over today, look at the facts. Look at what the polls indicate. Look at the percentages still to this day in Gaza that would support and have continued to support the rule of Hamas. A knife in the back. No big surprise here, but now it's coming forth that the Biden administration is getting frustrated with the failure to reach any sort of ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. And according to two different sources, they're considering opening an alternative channel with Hamas that would not include Israel in regards to having the return of the American hostages. So once again, there are five of them, and it's as if it's a knife in the back. It's as if the Biden administration says, we don't care about the 115 others. We're just going to deal with it on our own, Israel. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the support. Uh, an article that uh, I found frightening um, because and we don't we only live a hot skip and a jump away from Portland, but this article here is worth the read. Teach Palestine resources for educators in public Portland schools. Let me read this. The materials that they're teaching pre-K resources include a video that repeats the left-wing mantras, including a slideshow that glorifies the Palestinian intifada, violent resistance against Israel, promotes in f the photographs and the chanting of um, from the river to the sea. Uh, in kindergarten, 
Through second grade, the ideologies intensify. The teachers' union recommends lessons about art and action for Palestine uh, that teaches students uh, that Israel, like America, is actually an oppressor. And then before snack time, the teachers encourage them to share the kafas, the flags, uh, the protest signs with the children. They have them create their own uh, coloring pages of uh, slogans such as Free Palestine, Let Gaza Live, and of course, Palestine will be free, no more genocide. And again, this is happening. This is happening in the public school system of Portland. And then, as I've mentioned, the survey says, take a look at this, and it's an updated survey that gives you a real look at where things stand through the eyes of the Palestinians. And finally, a reminder that we are going to Israel in November, November 7th through the 17th, a tour that we call the land, the people, and the king. Pray about joining us. All the information's on our website at holygroundexploration.com. God bless you. Pray. Pray and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for the release of the captives, and for wisdom for the Israeli leadership. God bless you and shalom.